small, bro. Really kind of small. Uh. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, I don't think you guys can see it. I got stung, like at least a billion times on my chin. <laughs> That's how it feels like all over my face because the wetsuit can only cover so much of your skin and this is the only part that's showing so as we were diving I was like this the entire time going through the school of baby jellyfishes it's getting bigger but that is not an issue for me. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go away. I got stung many times, and yeah. Never wanna do for you. Shit, we're up at the cover. Ah, what the heck? Oh, <laughs> what an idiot. What a dummy. But you never know these days. These broke ass still are robbers. Bet you don't even have a job. And they like still took home us, huh? Made me buy this and an, and a very expensive security system where I can track my truck. So you know, very safe than sorry, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Get your pump on. Yep. That ah, boy. Oh, that's recording by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I pretty much filmed everything. Well, since it's morning. Cool. Did like a quick gym. You gonna start putting some gym on there too? Uh, no, not like <laughs> not like those peep squeaks in there. Yeah. Set up a whole tripod. For reals? That's so gay. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> funny. Why? Well, supposed to go gym and work out. Yeah. Not film yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm always getting messages from my, my a couple of my buddies in Washington State. They're like, they'll send me little like 20 second, 30 second clips of them like lifting. I'm like, <laughs> nice job, guys. <laughs> All right, you have us uh, headed down to the invasive tourney. I'll see you guys there. Shoot. All right, Gangi, made it to the spot. Morning. Morning. Morning! How are you? How's it about? How's it about? Huh? 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 Whoa, 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 and I can give you guys my number. Hi, hey. Tiala. Lillian, nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hope you guys don't mind I'm filming for the YouTube. No, no problem. Okay. I hope you don't mind. If you if you don't mind, we might uh, take your fish and see what's inside. Oh, yes. I totally don't mind at all. Okay, great. <laughs> Do some science. Sweet. Yeah. Oh. It's good science. It's citizen science. So like, what do you what do you guys do with the, the invasives? You mean over there? We like eat. when when we give you the invasive, what do you guys do with it? Well, it starts here, so maybe he can talk about what they how they process the fish first. Well, my plan was, uh, if guys didn't want to keep it, we would take them and the rice, especially we give them to the local dealers, the fish ponds. They're gonna use as compost. All right, so you can you, you guys can eat the top as well. You can fry fish if you want to. If not, the uh, like, team here is going to research on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we'll try to, we'll take out the otolith, which is a little bone in the head that acts like a tree ring, so you can tell how many years old it is. And then we'll take tissue uh, to see if it might have ciguatera. Although we have to send the samples away, so there's no instant test for that, unfortunately. All right. Uh, then we'll 
open them up, see what they've been eating. Um, bet, weigh, measure. Okay. Yeah. I remember uh, a tree prong one and they had like a, a shrimp. Oh, it regurgitated yeah. or something. Nice. Like it was fresh. I was like, damn it. That could have been like at least half a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Shove it back in there. <laughs> we have no. a secret scanner to make sure there's no lead weight in them. Okay, yes. <laughs> oh, so the spot where we were at, we had to make sure because when we got out, uh, had like pebbles. So when we got home, we had to make sure they didn't get any pebbles in the, ah. the invasives. Yeah, bad and lead weights. Yeah. Make them seem a lot heavier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks for driving all the way over. You guys came from Kona? Or you're no, we just, on this side and you were fishing over yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, yesterday was junk. <laughs> Our first spot was south side uh -huh. and then hole was rough. Yeah. We would probably die out there, but um, then we went to Kona side. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, M gills. 2.6. That Roy is 2.6. That's good size. Yeah. Do you, have you ever heard of that? Do you, uh, do you know? <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> That's the fatty. Yeah, all corner side. Yeah, well. I feel like we could do better, but yeah. Are they all Roy? Uh, mostly. two. Mostly. Yeah, mostly. Oh, I see. Yeah. Single-celled algae that lives on like turf algae, and so when coal layer grazing, they ingest that those single cells, and they start building up toxins. Um, as Roy eat those grazers, they build up. You know, it's like getting a, a, a double hit. They live longer with it. Um, so the cola, generally speaking, they were at a detectable level, um, and they were more. And, and even at a higher level sometimes in the Roy, but you're getting a lower dose total because there's just not as much meat on a cole as there is on the Roy. So it would take like 15 cole to have the same yeah, effect yeah. as like one or two Roy. Okay. I've heard that they're less, but we're hoping that some came in today so that we can ship them off for comparison. The studies that have been done, if you're trying to, for the Roy anyways, if you're trying to avoid it, you're less likely to get toxic Roy on this side where there's more wave energy so the algae that the, the gambier discus the single cell that causes ciguatera doesn't like turbulent water so much so those are the areas that will tend to be a little bit less likely but again it's it's not a um not there at all or there it's kind of just lower numbers so it's, it's all it's kind of a numbers game. <laughs> yeah. wow. Right on, you guys. Thank you for coming out to the first invasive species roundup produced by Conway Punibai. Um, You guys did really great. I know you guys came from very far areas, yeah? So today, you guys will pull out 92 Roy, 9 Taape, 1 Taal, 
with a total weight of 178 pounds. Wow. All right, you guys did good. Thank you for yeah. cleaning up the reef, yeah. Sorry. One, two, three. One, two, three. Recently really completed the Roy on the Kona side. About one in three. We have Sequitera. The Cole is more like three out of five. Oh, you got something in there? Yeah. What's the shrimp? We haven't tested any other species, but we've just sent off some additional species like Panini and Is that the same thing? Uh, yeah. Oh, one of those shrimp. Best job you get right there. <laughs> Ooh, little teeth go. Great. Damn. You got your picture, yeah? With the high oh, head? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm sorry, I saw you. Oh, no, you're good. But the toxin, you cannot tell how strong it is, right? Um, I can with the test results. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, uh, as bad as one fish would make you sick, kind of? That's, I think, well, I don't, it probably varies by person, you know, how much your tolerance is to it. Um, it definitely is above the FDA recommended recommended limit. And is it true that it's like, it, it stays in your system? It very well can, yes. Um, your body will process it eventually, slowly. Um, so it's sort of, yeah, I don't, nobody's done the studies to be able to say how long it takes. Those other fish, depending on temperature. That's from the guts, yeah? Uh, yeah, so three, six months if they yeah. stop exposure. So like, from the, the heel, process the one, the shrimp, and, the, um, and these guys are here. Oh, right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so yeah, it's about a one in, you know, one in three chance of, of Roy from Kona side. Um, it's probably a little less here. None of these is from the east side, though. None of these are from the east. We don't have very many samples from the east side, so I can't tell you anything about the prevalence over here. But we are excited because a lot of these ones that we're doing right now are all from Kauai, and we don't have anything there, so it'll be good to see. So them. yeah, it's a very different set of skills. It would be nice to have like an actual test kit over the counter, but it's it's a tricky enough poison. So right now. There's about five different flavors of ciguatoxin. So depending on the exact species of the of the so ciguatera is caused by a little single-celled algae called Gambier discus. It lives on limu. Um, and so when something like a cole or a manini eats the limu, it picks up inadvertently picks up those single cells and starts building up toxins. And then when something like a roy eats it and then eats multiple fish that have been concentrating, it becomes more and more concentrated as you go moving up the food web. But the the pole that we saw on the Kona side, they had the FDA limit of ciguatera in it. And probably why you don't get sick is there's just not as much meat on the on a cole as there is on the roy. So it's it's the same concentration, just less of a total amount of toxin. Oh, she is doing those Oh, another one. Just a lot. Tons of fish. Tons of fish. That one? Yeah, yeah, that's a great fish. Yeah. Which we just sent off another batch to Germany. To, in addition to the Roy, we're looking in the Cole. We've also got uh, Manini, um, Umamale, um, the little browns, the, the Ma'i'i. Um, yeah, the little, little, little guys and um, some, uh, some uh, different goatfish species. Just what we've been sampling for, for other studies. So far, no sign of SIG. I haven't gotten any results back from those yet. So like I said. You guys have like a website? If it goes published? Uh, eventually, yeah. I 
try to keep up with the website, but I'm not really good at it. I apologize. <laughs> well, love to learn about it. But yeah, we can. Um, you can just you can just reach out to me. I'm at the university. Um, we're with the Hawaii Cooperative Fishery Research Unit. My name is Tim, and you can reach me at tbg at hawaii.edu. And um, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. And I, I use, ah, wasn't me for, for Ciguatera. So we don't. There's a lot we don't know about Ciguatera. Um, Thank you. Whether it's uh, always present or whether it blooms and it's like cyclical. Um, yeah, so you, and, and given that these fish can stay toxic for three to six months after exposure, you could have a bloom and the fish could be just starting to become safe again and it could bloom again and, and you would never see a difference in the fish, but the algae itself is, is, um, is blooming and, and dying off and dying back. Um, Bigger fish, obviously, you know, while it's not, it's not um, foolproof, bigger fish will tend to have, be more, more likely to have it, particularly with the Roy. So bigger and older fish. Um, areas with higher wave energy are a little bit less likely. So the, the algae, the single set algae that lives on the Limu doesn't like high energy environments um, as much. So. That's part of the reason we tend to see ciguatera a little less on this side of the island than on the on the west side. Um, they don't like the freshwater input quite so much. That's part of it too, potentially. So you might see them less also here on this side because of that. Golf course fertilizer tells them it. Well, I mean, it certainly doesn't probably doesn't help. It's hard to tease that apart because. Um, we don't have we don't have very good current data at a big scale on water quality and habitat. Certainly, if you dump a bunch of fertilizer in the water, you're going to have more limu. More limu means that there's more places for that algae to attach to, and so potentially it could be you know more more of a risky area. Um, but there's no we don't have hard data to prove that. Oh yeah, worldwide. Um, they have a really big problem with it in the Caribbean. They have a problem with it um, throughout the Pacific. It's different species of gambier disc. Different species of the algae, though. So the, the toxins are all slightly different in different places. They're even starting to get ciguatera with climate change in places that they haven't had it before because waters get warm enough for the algae to grow. Yeah, they're like bigger over there. No wonder they mostly have tournaments over there. Yeah, no, they're kind of big over there. Ciguatera is a more warm water issue. I have not gotten any samples from there, so I don't really know. Um, I, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> if, if somebody, you know, if somebody offered me to go up there and get samples, I'd happily go up there and try to get some samples. Uh, yeah, Northwest Hawaiian Islands. Oh yeah, I volunteer. No. <laughs> Suck you feck, it's Just got done with the invasive tourney. I didn't come in first, but. At least we got placed in fourth place. <laughs> yeah. it was all good fun. It was all fun and games. It's always good to help out the environment, especially with that reef ecosystem right now. It's kind of all jammed up. Yeah, all kind of pala in the ocean, so it's always good to pick it up. And there is just tons of roys you only can do what you can but uh i got a tokunaga gift card Yay! it's better than nothing it was a really good first time experience for my first tournament just headed home and call it a day
At least now I know what I can expect for the next tournament. And it's just a learning process for me because I've never done any tournament. It was a super educating learning experience and getting to meet all the local divers, all the local hammers out there. The moment of truth. Oh, this guy smells good. Got the secret sauce. Mango, ceviche style, some cabbage, and tortillas. Alright, you diveaholics. Get you guys on the next one. Shoot!